Good evening, everyone. I appreciate everybody that's come this way tonight. And I know uh, some are surprised, but Brother Anthony let the cat out of the bag in advance a couple of weeks ago when he said uh, that I was going to be filling in for him. And I, uh, I just don't want you to ever think that uh, I don't take this, that I take this privilege lightly to be able to stand here. He could have asked several people, and I don't know, maybe it's because I'm outspoken that he asked me first. So I appreciate that opportunity. I just want to make, before we get into the message and get into the prayer request, uh, <coughs> Patsy Glore, uh, visitation is this evening between 6 and 8 at McCoon's, and as far as I know, the funeral the graduation service is at 2 o'clock tomorrow at McCoon's. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> what a wonderful lady she, she, she was. What a wonderful, uh, welcome saint she's going to, that she is in heaven. So, uh, <coughs> just want to say thank you about that. So, uh, you can be turning to, uh, Second Chronicles uh, chapter 7, I was asked on the way coming in by my wife, how do you decide uh, what you're going to speak on or what you're going to say? And I said, well, you know, you get along with God and you begin to pray and then God will give you a thought here. You read your Bible and, and God will give you a thought there and the next thing you know it's, it's whittled down and, and then you settle on something. And so <clears throat> I'm going to give you exactly what God has given to me. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and a very, very familiar scripture. And uh, before we get started into the, to the message, uh, I just want to make sure you're paying attention. So, I, and you know, a little funny starting out. I, I hope it doesn't offend anybody. If it does, put your two fingers in one in each ear and one in the other one and and I'll be done with that in just a second. But uh, <clears throat> I heard about, uh, and if I have told this one here before, I don't think I always put uh, the place that I told it and the date and so on and, and you know, what church, what service, a.m., p.m., Wednesday. And so I, don't, I couldn't find East Noonan on this anywhere. But I heard about this 40-year-old uh, middle-aged woman. Not 40, but she was a middle-aged woman. And she had a heart attack. And uh, on the operating table, uh, God appeared to her in a vision, and uh, she asked God, she said, God, is this it? God very plainly said, no, no, uh, you have 40 more years. So upon uh, her recovery, she decided to stay in the hospital and have a major facelift. Uh, have a tummy tuck, liposuction, an extreme makeover. Two months later, she was leaving the hospital. She was in a head-on collision, and she was killed instantly. She got to heaven, and she said, God, I want to ask you a question. God said, certainly. <laughs> and she said, I thought you told me I had 40 years. Forty more years, God shook his head and he said, I'm sorry, I just didn't recognize you. <laughs> so, you know, be careful what you have done to your body sometime, because uh, you never know uh, how it'll end up. But uh, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 7, uh, beginning, I'm going I'm to start in verse number 12. And I'll read down through verse 15, and then I'll give you what the Lord's laid on our heart tonight. Verse 14, or verse 12 says this, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night, and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer, and have chosen this place to myself for an house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilences among my people. 
Verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. He said, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. Special attention to the word prayer there. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord, for your love. I want to thank you for your blessings. I thank you for everything that you do for us. And I pray tonight, God, that you'd meet with us here in your house. Pray for all those, Lord, that have come this way. Pray for Brother Anthony. He asked me to pray. He asked us to pray for him. And so I will as he's teaching uh, the youth. And uh, just pray, Lord, that you'd open our hearts and our minds and you'd teach us through your precious word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Now, the subject that I chose for tonight, and I told Dennis that I might be a little, little harsh, but I mean, I, he told me that was all right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his word for that. And I, and I probably won't be too harsh, but... Uh, Subject I've chosen for tonight's message, message, is it too late for America? I think that's a timely thought right there. Now, keep this thought in mind as we get into the message. Have we crossed the point of no return? Now, I'm just going to tell you all, tell you the truth. I preached this message in my sleep last night. I woke up at about 4 o'clock, and I was just getting it. And I hope that I can get it tonight the same way I got it during the middle of the night this morning because I, I didn't get much sleep. But uh, I mean, the, the Lord was just, have we crossed the point of no return where the American dream placed in the bosom of our forefathers become a national nightmare? Now, it seems to be slipping away day by day. You guys watch the news, and I'm not going to talk politics tonight, but I'm sure, is it too late for America? I'm sure you could call this a political message. This wonderful great nation must be born again, or we will join the graveyard. Hear what I say? We'll join the graveyard of nations gone on before us that have lost their zeal, have lost their zesto, have lost their hunger, for God Almighty and His Word. Amen. Can you say amen to that? Many may remember a time when America, when in America, pregnancy, pregnancy outside of the marriage was a disgrace. I remember it. I was like 15 or 16 years old, and uh, I knew a, a, a young girl, a, I think she was in about the ninth or 10th grade. She got pregnant, and we didn't see her for about a year. We were asking around, and they said her parents sent her away, sent her to live with a relative in another state. They, it was a disgrace. Homosexuality was a sin. Not, you know, I don't know the initials that way, L, G, B, Q, T, all that. That's, you know, now our president celebrates when they make uh, uh, something good. Oh man, they finally now have equal rights. What are you talking about? Child abuse was rare, almost unheard of. Why, if it, uh, you know, I got spanked many times. I got grabbed up, snatched up, jerked up in the grocery store, at home, in the front yard, backyard, in the car, didn't matter where it was. You think I called the uh, Child Protective Services? Why, well, whew, I wouldn't have made it past. <laughs> Listen, marriage was a sacred thing. I remember, and I remember it very vividly today, the first person was a relative, a distant relative, who they said he was getting a divorce. Chico is getting a divorce. I heard my mother say to my father. They'd been married about 37 or 38 years. This is in the 60s, I guess. 
Oh, my, ooh, a divorce. Well, now, hey, you didn't, well, the living together was shameful. In public schools, our stu students were allowed to pray. They really were, until somebody said, hey, that offended my daughter when that man prayed at the football field on his knees after the game, took prayer out of the school and took prayer out of the, uh, uh, the sports events. You remember a time when the Ten Commandments were posted on the walls of all of our public buildings? They used to tell me all the time, your picture's on the post office wall, <laughs> you know. Listen closely. The cry is going out. My friends, we, we seem to be one, a once proud nation wallowing in materialism and rotting in sin. Now, I see, I was going to pass out some bobblehead dolls tonight, and the only way their head went was like this. I didn't want any that went back and, you know, side to side. Searching for what we call pleasure and freedom. How many times have you heard the argument, I, I, it's a free world. You know, when you, when you start talking about abortion, it's a woman's right. Look what Psalms 91, verse 1 and 2 says. Verse 1 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. America wants to know what's going on. They don't have the answers to all the problems. Just put this hand. Oh, if Billy uh, Graham was still alive, he was the president's preacher. You remember? He went to the White House no matter what trouble was going on, what was happening in the world. Billy Graham stood up for the Word of God. Those who preach the Word of God are often shunned, laughed at, mocked at, made fun of. If a reporter were to, hear, were to hear this message, if you sent this message to Fox News or CNN or uh, some of the other ones, why, you know what they'd say? They'd call it right-wing rhetoric. In other words, extreme conservatism. I don't mind telling you now, I'm an extreme conservative. I'm from the old school. I don't know anything about this new stuff that's going on because my mom and daddy taught me the right from, right from wrong. I know I see a bunch of you in here had parents just like mine. Listen to what God through Peter said about the subject, talking about the end time. Folks, we're living in the end times. We're living in the, in the last days. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken by the prophets, the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the, the Lord and Savior. Now here it is in uh, verse number 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. They'll be trying to tell you that what you believe, what you think is not right. It's just, you know, you got wrong, you need to change. People have told me I was too staunch. Keep on telling me I hadn't heard it in a while. Listen, the matter is not right or left. The matter is right or wrong, amen? Proverbs 9, verse number 7, He that reproveth a scorner getteth to himself shame. Verse 8 says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Repu rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. I don't speak as a pessimist. pessimist. I look at myself as an optimist. I really do. But I'll tell you this much. America, the country that I love, the country that I was willing to go to war for and die for when I was just a young Young buck, 19, 18, 19 years old, must turn to God or she will surely die. Our grandkids don't have a chance. Our children, our grandkids and their grandkids won't have a chance if somebody won't stand up. Now, America is ready for judgment, but we need mercy. Now, let me tell you, that was my introduction. 
I'll move along quickly now. Every message needs an introduction. It really does. I never hear Brother Anthony. I never hear one of our Sunday school teachers. They always get, when they get up to tell you what they're going to talk about, they, they lay it out for you a little bit first. Is it too late for America? There is hope for America in this promise. I'm going to take verse 14. Every morning when Mary and I get on the bus, or before we get on the bus, we hold hands and we stand there in the doorway, or I'm in the driver's seat and she's sitting behind me, and we pray, and I ask God for the answer. And I always end up, now if I'm telling a story, go ahead and just say, hey! If I'm telling a story, just go ahead. I quote this verse every morning in our prayer. That's what America needs. This is what America needs. Is there hope for America? Has America crossed the deadline? One more time. There's hope in His Holy Word. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now, I'm only going to preach part one to you here. Can't, I don't have enough time for part two, so we'll get that another time. But what a promise from God, amen? Allow me to give a personal opinion here. I'll get right into the message. If Amer America needs to wake up before it's eternally too late, that is my personal opinion. Now, I might be all washed up. I might be wet behind the ears. But America needs to wake up before it's too late. I believe that we're living in, we as parents, as grandparents, as aunts and uncles, we need to stand in the gap and detour the younger generation from going to hell. We're still driving a school bus. People tell me, how long are you going to drive that school bus? I said, I don't know. As long as they keep putting kindergartners and first and second and third graders on the bus with me, we'll keep driving. Because I'm going to tell you what, <coughs> all the way to school and all the way back home from school, we're talking. We're trying to teach them. We're trying to teach them what is right. Mary asked uh, one of the little girls, she said, how come I never see your daddy? And she said, well, I don't have a daddy. I have two mothers. I wanted to do a backflip, jump off the bus right then. I wanted to, you know, I was looking right at the mother, one of the mothers. Mm -mm -mm. Listen, first thing I want us to see, and let's let you know, this is simple, specific instructions. The Bible says, if my people, you know, I got to thinking about it, I said, they don't want to hear this. They go, as soon as I tell them where I'm going to preach from, <coughs> they're going to tune it out. But please stay with me. Listen to me for just a few minutes. If my people, you know what I thought about that? That is a personal, solely rests on God's people. We're not looking at this promise right or correctly if we think, oh, if Hollywood only didn't have so many X and R rated movies. They called me the other day from DirecTV and said, we're going to give you seven free channels. You might have got the call too. We're going to give you seven free channels in the 500s. <coughs> I said, well, all we watch is channel 538, the Western channel. And they said, no, I'm going to give you HBO. I'm going to give you Cinemax. I'm going to give you Showtime. We'll throw in Playboy. I said, whoa, you want me to cancel my subscription with you right now? I don't want it. <coughs> I'm not strong enough to resist that devil. That's strong. Because you see, a lot of folks when they're surfing, huh? They see things. They, well, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. But If only God would straighten the government out. You ever heard that one? I said, you're not looking at this promise right if, if you think it's up to those people. Uh, with every tax increase, with every health increase, with every gas increase, with every grocery increase, the border's not secure. Now we find out that the uh, vaccine was only a trial. They, they had no proof. 
They lied to us. My wife and I have both been sick ever since we got it. Got the shot, that is. I got news. God doesn't look to those people. He doesn't look to the politicians. He doesn't look to the people that are making millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, on, on direct TV. He doesn't look to the cell phone industry. I'm not even going to, I don't have a thing in here about technology tonight, I don't think. Maybe I do. Maybe God will give them. This promise is a personal problem, promise. If my people, don't look the other way. Don't look at other people. It couldn't be any plainer to me. I said to myself, uh, I said, boy, God gave us some simple, specific instructions. If I call myself a Christian, and you put your name in there too, because I believe everyone in here calls themselves a Christian. We must take ownership. That was the first thing. You know, you know why? I said I wasn't going to mention Mary tonight, and I'm not going to. But she tells me all the time, own up to it. Take the blame. Don't be saying it was somebody. Excuses, excuses. You hear them every day. You know, guy said, if the preacher wasn't so long-winded, I'd come to church every time the doors were open. It's too hot. You know, that, that, that's one. In the summer, it's too hot. In the winter, it's too cold. In the springtime, when the weather's just right, you find someplace else to go. It's raining. I mean, somebody, somebody asked me uh, if I was going to church tonight. I said, I better. I said, if I don't, I'll have one mad preacher at me. I, you talk about Alabama getting on Georgia people for beating, whooping up on Alabama. The devil will give you every excuse he can to keep you from coming to, coming to church. We have a good friend. She wouldn't miss a doctor's appointment for all of the money in the world. She would not miss a doctor's appointment, but on Sunday morning, she'll call, and you, it sounds like she's on her deathbed. I, I didn't sleep last night. I can't find my hearing aid. I can't find my false teeth. I can't. F I mean, I'm talking about excuses now. I, I try to be real careful about offering up an excuse in my house. We must take ownership. If America falls, it will be our own fault, the fault of God's people. God said, if my people, now watch this. Put this in the margin of your Bible somewhere or in your memory bank. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses, verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin it at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? It must begin at the front door, not the back door. It must begin with you and with me. Amen? Can I, oh, I knew I was going to get an amen out of that one. I got good news for you as we move along. The hope of America is not in the White House. It's not in the State House. It's not in the schoolhouse. It's not in the jailhouse. It's not in the outhouse. It is in you and I. Amen? If my people, but watch this one. We'll move right along. And I'll tell you what, I, I condensed this message down to about 15 minutes, but see, I had it ready a while ago, and I kept adding to it. <laughs> you know, I, so I, I can cut it off anywhere, but very simple, specific ex instructions shall humble themselves. It's not like trying to hook up your first computer. I remember 25 years ago when computers came out and uh, Delta says, uh, we're going to give you a free computer. You remember that, Mary? They did. $1,700. Payroll deduct every two weeks. Free. Yeah, yeah, free. <laughs> free. That's when I got the illustration about it. There ain't no free lunch. If somebody's trying to give you something for nothing, the red flag ought to go up. <coughs> but I got at home about seven or eight boxes. I told you these were simple, specific instructions. If my people should humble themselves. Wasn't like that desktop computer. 
with all the cables and, you know, the uh, different jacks. And we spent two weeks on the phone with the help desk trying to get it hooked up. Never did. <laughs> Never did. You remember that, Charles, do you? Yeah. Our scripture says, humble themselves. What's the opposite of humility? Today in America, my friends, we reek with pride. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 says, These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Verse 17 says, Pride. <coughs> pride is number one on God's hit parade. Pride is behind every sin. Think about it. Oh, look what I did. I look, I, I knocked out uh, Mike Tyson. He, he'd knock him out in the first round. Didn't take too long after he tried to bite off Holyfield's ear that he got knocked out. Got to be careful about being full of ourselves. <coughs> we reek with humanistic haughtiness. We're full of self. We walk around like a peacock. You ever seen a peacock? We took the kids to North Atlanta, and we pulled the bus up, and there was a couple of male peacocks there, and there was also a couple of fillies, or, you know, females. And those peacocks start spreading them wings and strutting and that's what it reminds me of, the way that these people, whoever wins the Super Bowl or whoever wins it, they brag about how good they are, not where the gift come from, came, came from. They say, look at me, God. What about me? Look what I've accomplished. No, the best thing is to be humble. He said to have humility. God will not bless you as an individual. He will not bless a nation, a country, a state, a town that's full of pride. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 18 says this. It's a good one right here. 16 and verse number 18. Pride goeth before destruction. I thought about that. As I was looking this over, I said, Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Pride goeth before destruction. James chapter 4, verse number 6 says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but God giveth grace unto the humble. Think about this for a minute. God resisting you. God resisting man. God resisting America. God setting himself in battle against America. I thought about that. Now, hey, we don't want that. All God has to do is think it. Boom. Gone. Proverbs 27 and verse number 1 says, Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. America needs God's grace. If my people shall humble themselves. This is a big one. If I don't do anything else, I'm going to get this one in. And pray. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 7 says this. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Can you imagine when we're taking up the offering and they ask me to pray and I pray here and I'm done praying, Poof! it looks like you're in a fog, a smog. That's what happened. And if you read verses 12 through 15, three times prayer is mentioned. So I think it's pretty important. But I thought about that. Was that a misprint? I got three Bibles out to see about that. Uh, the glory of the Lord filled the house when it was done praying. I got three Bibles. Every one of them said the same thing. Now the only thing I had was King James Bibles. I didn't have any of that. I didn't have any Brother Anthony's Bible. Which, you know, uh, ESV is a good Bible too, I guess, but I've just been raised on this one. We cry, we complain. Oh God, I'm sinking. I'm drowning. I need help. I have nowhere to turn. 
and I thought about this one. I'm falling and I can't get up. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd be a little more dramatic on that, but, but you know what I'm talking about. That's what we do. God, you don't understand. I'm literally on my last leg. Well, that's what we do when we get in a tight, right? You ever been in a tight? I don't have time to illustrate that. I would some other time. Let me be honest. God's doing something. All you have to do is look around. Look around right now. Turn the TV on. You got a cell phone? You don't even have to look it up anymore. I get about 10 or 12 news things every day. Tucker Carlson, Hannity, Laura Ingram. God's judged the world through the flood in Noah's day. Noah stood and he warned the people. Think about that. He warned the people for 120 years. And he said, the rain is coming. He's building the ark, even though it had never rained. You talk about nerve. The Bible says, and the Lord said, I will destroy man. And I got thinking about this now. You, uh, Genesis chapter 6, verse number 7. God said in Noah's day, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, for it repenteth me and I ha that I have made thee. Do you not think for one minute that God can do that again? Do you think, not think for one minute that God would do that again? I think he would. Now, I don't know. I might be off base, but, oh, I love verse number 8, Genesis 6 and verse number 8, where the Bible says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now, we say God is our only hope, and that's well said. And this may shock you. I guess this would be a good time for that since they got up and walked out. <laughs> Listen to this. Preacher was preaching, a little long-winded. And, uh, you know, Anthony can be long-winded sometimes, but, you know, he, he's been, he's been uh, brief, a lot briefer lately. But he was preaching, he was long-winded. But, I don't know, he'd been preaching for, for about 45, 50 minutes, and the guy in the front row got up and started walking out. He jumped down from the pulpit and he said, hey, where are you going? And the guy said, I'm going to get a haircut. Going to get a haircut? Why don't you get a haircut Saturday or Friday? And he said, well, I didn't need a haircut when I came in here. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up. If my people shall humble themselves and pray. Here's the last one. I'm going to combine these two. Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Prayer without repentance angers God. Can you hear me on that? Repentance means to turn. We have a political ceremony. Uh, the United States, New York gets hit. You know, the terrorists hit them and, and, and with the, the attack. And we say, uh, God bless America while we're killing babies. Well, we're doing the things that we've been doing all along, and we expect God to forgive us of that. Sodom and Gomorrah struts down Main Street with pride, and, and God is cursed and damned. Why should God bless America? Now, here's the call right here. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Now, I don't know if we've crossed God, uh, the deadline or not, God's deadline. But if there ever were a time that America needed to repent, I'll close right here. You've got to watch out. My, my old preacher used to say uh, one more thing, and then he'd preach for another 30 minutes. I'm not going to do that tonight. But I think that we're living in the last days, and I don't, I don't say we've crossed the... I believe in my heart. God would rather pardon than judge. Listen to what 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 2 says. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, and if you have your Bible out, he said, behold, now, underline that word now, is the accepted time. Behold, now is the accepted time, the day of salvation. Is there hope for America? Quite frankly, there is. God's people, the church, they're going to have to get up. They're going to have to sit up. 
They're going to have to stand up. They're going to have to wake up and be accountable. The question is, as we're studying on Sunday night, Brother Dennis being the moderator and Tony Evans, the power of knowing him. I, I wish that everybody that's here right now would be attending that class. God's people should know what to look for. First Corinthians, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 1 says this, But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. In other words, you're not ignorant. I don't have to write this to you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. And skip down to verse number 4. And the Bible says this, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. We should know. Is there any hope for America? Is it too late for America? Let me throw this in. I won't charge you. We'll pray and we'll be done. If we'll do those four things, humble yourselves, pray, seek God's face, and turn from your wicked ways, God Almighty promises that He will do three. Is there hope for America? I believe so. He said, then will I hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. That's it. That, that's the message. That's the message. I, I was praying. I've been praying all week that I'd beat Anthony because uh, he's teaching. You know, he started the same time we did. I don't see him. He hadn't opened that door. I know he didn't go home. But... Uh, Thank you for your attention. Thank you for coming. I hope I didn't bore you. Just give you what God gave to me. I want to be obedient, so it's, it's not on me now. Let's pray, and then we'll, we'll look at our uh, prayer sheet. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your love and your blessings. I thank you for being with us tonight, for speaking through me. I was a little apprehensive about preaching a message like this, but you showed me that it was very, very educational for us, and uh, we need to know. We need to know where we stand with you. We call ourselves Christian, Christians, and if we'll do certain things, you'll do certain things. So pray for everything that's taken place, and I pray especially for Patsy Glore's family, Lord. She was a blessing to, to this church, to me personally and Mary. And I thank you for all you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.